politicians get ready to rock on a mission. Each one of us shares our own vision. When I was on the yard, I went real hard. While I patrolled the streets, all the G's I meet. When I was on the yard, I went real hard. While I patrolled the streets, all the G's I meet. While I really got to stay woke. I like to thank God above. I like to thank God above. God above. I like to thank God above. God above. I like to thank God above. Saludos, once again, it's your host, Gabe Morales. First of all, I'd like to give thanks to all of our supporters. We had over 17,000 hits alone on the Mexican Mafia video, part one. Now, besides liking our videos, I'll ask you to please also subscribe so that you are notified of new content as soon as it comes out. I have a lot more videos planned, so I appreciate the comments, and suggestions also. It may be getting old for some of you, but I never want to lose focus. Why I share my knowledge to educate the public and politicians and for police and corrections officers to use this accurate training as a learning tool. As far as you gangsters, you guys are the experts. But I bet if you talk to most of the veteranos and former gangsters like I have, they will tell you that it wasn't worth it. They lost out on a lot of memories and quality time with their kids and loved ones. So it's never late to turn a new leaf, get no? The San Gabriel Valley is located east of Los Angeles and is known for several geographical features. The majestic, sometimes snow-capped San Gabriel Mountains on the north. Yes, it does snow in the higher elevations of Southern California, especially in the winter. And when it rains, man, it pours. The San Rafael Hills are to the west, and San Fernando Valley is farther to the northwest. Puente Hills are to the south, separating Orange County, and the Chino Hills are to the east, which overlooks Chino Prison, as if they need a reminder of what could happen if they don't stay on the straight and narrow path. I will start off today at the top northwest portion of the valley, where Spanish-themed buildings occupy the town of Pasadena which hosts the annual Rose Bowl for college football. Pasadena has several Latino gangs located within it, as well as black gangs. Since I'm focusing this segment on Mexican American gangs, I will mention a few of them here. There is Barrio Pasaripa, who beef with Pasadena Denver Lanes, as well as other Latino gangs, like Pasadena Latin Kings. This clica has no relationship to the Latin Kings out of Chicago, and they beef with nearby gangs such as Bolin Parque, as seen in the Placaso in the lower picture here. The city also has Southside Villa Boys, as well as Northside Pasa and Eastside Pasa. To the east is Southside Monrovia Nuevo Barrio, who often battle with the local Duroc Crips. Duarte Eastside is located to the east of them. Shout out to my big brother, Ken Bell, who has been a Duarte School District board member for many years. I've said it many times before, but we'll say it again. We both feel that one of the best possibilities for success in life is a good education. It is also one of the best deterrents to the gang lifestyle. So don't be a fool. Stay in school. Dropping down to the Alhambra area is Sangra, famed poet and writer of the book Always Running, Luis Rodriguez grew up there, as well as Angel Stump Valencia, who I had at New Folsom. He, along with Danny Boy Pina from Hazard, killed longtime MM member Mo Farrell at Old Folsom just before I hired on. As a youngster, Angel was involved in a robbery with Folsom shot caller Nico Velasquez, who was later killed at Tehachapi by MM member Sleepy Huerta. A third MA heavyweight, Kilroy Royball of White Fence, was also attacked by Sleepy, but survived. Kilroy dropped out of the MA after that, talked the good word, and now is deceased. I have heard different reasons why these three specific hits went down, but I was told by a program administrator at Folsom Prison who reviewed files and knew all three cases well that these three individuals made a truce with the BGF at Old Folsom when there was a war going on with the Blacks to avoid lockdowns of MM members. 
The honorary godfather of the Emmy, Joe Morgan, was also brought in to the office at Old Folsom by an investigative captain to try to get his approval as well. But Joe stated, no, too many carnales had already died over this dispute. Given this comment, I feel it was Joe who sanctioned the hits on all three. I can't prove it, and I'm sure there are other reasons as well. But that's how I feel about that. Lomas is located in Monterey Park, just below Sangra. Lomas often refer to themselves as Hills Brothers. One would assume by the bottom pick that they started in 1972, but I'm pretty sure they are older than that. Lomas was a barrio claimed by L.A. County Jail shot caller Lalo Martinez, who ran a lot of things in that facility until he overdosed and died. Southside Bartlett Street is located just east of Lomas. El Monte has a lot of Mexican-Americans living in and around it, and it was well known as the home of El Monte American Legion Stadium, where many popular rock groups would play back in the day. El Monte Hicks is an old barrio located in the northwest section of El Monte. It was named after a migratory farm workers camp called Hicks Camp. This is where my father-in-law grew up, and he told me that his father put up a boxing ring in their backyard to keep the kids out of trouble. He played in a well-known band going back to the 1950s and played the horn for over 50 years. I remember he would have one of his bandmates, El Huero, come out in a zoot suit at the beginning of their performance. Another player in his band was from Pomona and lived across the street from my wife. That's another story maybe I'll talk about another day, but I will talk about Pomona at the end of this episode. There was another local clique on land owned by a man named Hayes. El Monte Hayes is located just to the east of them, and Northside El Monte is just to the west. El Monte Flores, EMF, is by far the biggest of the four and has spawned several Mexican Mafia members and associates over the years. Their name is derived from Las Flores, a poor neighborhood in South El Monte, where several flower nurseries were located. Mexican Mafia veteran Raymond Huero Shai Shyrock was from Artesia, but he and his wife Bunny and children lived in El Monte for a time period. In 1995, he found out about a couple of Mexican Mafia dropouts that were living near his home. He ordered these individuals killed and recruited a youngster from EMF called Luis Pelon Macia to carry out the hit. I will do an episode on that incident and the massacre that occurred at a later date. My father-in-law's brother and my wife's cousins lived in Baldwin Park for many years. This area has several active gangs, including Northside Bolin and Eastside Bolin Parque. Emmy member Albert Beto Vargas is from Bolin Parque and was very close to the deceased Emmy shot caller Peter San Ojeda, who ruled Orange County for many years. Beto was arrested on a RICO case in October 2012, was found guilty and sentenced to the Federal Bureau of Prisons, and is presently housed at USP Tucson in Arizona. Basa Grande is located to the south and actually was a stronghold back in the late 1960s to early 70s for the Nuestra Familia Mexicana because their number one padre, Juan Lips Valdez, was from there. Don't believe me? Check out a recent episode by David Contreras on Police and Fire Publishing, interviewing one of my mentors, Brian Perry, who had lips on his caseload when he was an SSU agent. Mr. Perry later became the head of that program and oversaw all gang validations within the California Department of Corrections. Today, Bassett is often referred to as the Night Owls, or Tecolotes, and they are firmly aligned with La M via Carlos Pico Miranda and Victor Terco Acuna. Salsa Puente is located in the city of La Puente. M member Rafael Cisco Gonzalez Munoz is from La Puente, and he aligned himself with now dropout Perico Rocha against a local drug dealer named Maria Yantada. Cisco was arrested and sentenced to the BOP in 2013 for his offenses, along with his brother on a RICO case. Jesse Bird Gonzalez is another MM member from La Puente, who was on death row, but since all death sentences have been lifted, he is now housed at Kern Valley State Prison. The Linda Flats is a barrio over there by West Covina that has experienced a lot of violence over the years. In fact, I mentioned this area in my very first book, Barrio Warfare, Violence in the Latino Community, and talk about where I attended a community concern group about gang activity there. West Covina is better known for its middle-class homes, nice mall, 
and clubs like the Glass House, where I used to go back in the mid-1980s. But it also has a lot of gang activity over the years. Southside West Covina is one such clica. Covina is sometimes confused with West Covina. There is a small click of 18th Street in this area. For a short time in the late 1990s, I worked at a well-known large group home company. In my home base was a group home located in Azusa. This is where Azusa Trece is from. And I dealt with several older homies from, from there, as well as many youngsters. Pomona is far as you can go east and still be in L.A. County. And it is considered part of the San Gabriel Valley. But people who know it know that there are some fairly large hills separating it from the rest of the valley. So one could easily consider it to be part of the IE running to the east. Pomona is home to the L.A. County Fair, and I used to live very near there. There are also many car shows and concerts held there. Most of my wife's direct family is from Pomona, and my boys went to school there once. Happy Town Pomona is an old barrio, and I remember homies hanging out at the 7-Eleven just off Holt in the 57 freeway. Woodside Pomona claims an area south of the I-10 freeway and north of Orange Grove. Both Happy Town members and Woodside Pomona usually attended Ganesha High School. Westside Pomona is also present in Toppenish, Washington, where I once owned a Mexican restaurant for about a year. It's a long story. Not enough time for it here, but it's in my book, The Life and Times of a Vato Loco. I recently saw on a gang map that Eastside Pomona was listed over by the Pomona Valley Indoor Swamp Meet, but I was always under the impression that is Northside Pomona territory. I have used this gang map as a reference for several of my episodes, and usually it is pretty good, but I don't think that part is right. Anyways, most of those homies go to North Pomona High School. Pomona Sur Lacotes claim a small area south of Holt and north of Mission Boulevard, near the indoor swap meet, and west of the outdoor swap meet in the old drive-in movie theory located off of Ramona. Southside Marijuanos have a clica located south of that area. Cherryville, Pomona is one of the oldest gangs in the area. I can't remember exactly which one is right at this time, but my wife's grandfather once told me that way back in the day when Holt was just a dirt road out in the Campo, that some families from the southern part of Mexico lived in that area. Cherryville was originally a cherry orchard, and some of the people in that area started a gang that claimed Hamilton Park. I've been on several ride-alongs with Pomona PD, and one time I recall a house that was painted totally purple. As I recall, the officer said it was a family who recently moved in from Watts Barrio Great and were allowed to live there. I thought that was kind of interesting. The biggest gang in P-Town is 12th Street Sharkies that date back to the 1940s and are named after 12th Street that runs east to west through their barrio. They have feuded with Cherryville for many years, as is depicted in the lower pick, and they claim Madison Park, which is now renamed Tony Cerda Park. Anybody from Pomona knows the Cerda family, both the good and the bad. I think I dealt with one of the Cerdas at New Folsom, and I remember seeing a shark on his neck. P-12 claims a large area for mission down to the 60 freeway, and is bordered by the 71 freeway on the west and reservoir on the east. This is the area run by Mike Lerma who was covered in the Mexican Mafia Part 2 episode shown on this channel. I will probably do an exclusive P12 video in the future because there's so much more I could add here, but don't have enough time. There is also a gang in Pomona called Los Olivos that are located to the south of P12. My understanding is that the Olivos were once a southern branch of P12, but broke off. Then they started using a dolphin symbol to represent their clica. In the wild, a shark is known to be a very violent predator. Many people don't know it, but tamer dolphins will plunge their nose hard into a shark if threatened and are able to drive them off. That's just a little bit of animal trivia for you. But in the gang world here, it might be relevant. Well, that's it for this episode on the San Gabriel Valley. I know I left out a few clickas, but I thought I'd cover most of the major ones. Once again, if you have any comments or feedback, please hit me up. I can take constructive criticism. But if you just want to be a hater, move on, Ese. Homie ain't got time for that. Ya sabes. Until next time, this is Gabe Morales for Gangsters, Cops, and Politicians. I like to think God above.